you never know what you're going to see. There's a real chance of finding species that are um, quite unusual or rarely seen. And some of the journeys that they undertake, they cross the globe again and again and again. I think for a lot of bird watchers, that's one of the fascinations. Although we don't fully appreciate it, they are a wonderful indicator of the state of the environment. It's a fabulous bird to see. It really is a, a super bird in its breeding plumage with its mixture of chestnuts and blacks and uh, sort of strutting around on the mud flats amongst other waders. The Great Knot, with its world population of less than 300,000, rapidly decreasing over the last 20, 25 years, it's now been designated as globally endangered. And that's just one down from the highest category, which is critically endangered. And so the, the Great Knot now is up there with those birds that need as much help as can possibly be given to it. The reason is, I think, a very simple one. It's, it's the destruction of its wintering grounds and its migratory stopovers. For many years, we have known that there is a small population that winter actually in the uh, Arabian Gulf. And Coral Baida here is the, is the best site or the most reliable site to find them um, in the United Arab Emirates. These are birds that breed in the high Arctic and they then, when conditions in the Arctic are unsuitable, they fly here. Most great knot spend the winter in northern Australia. There's only a relatively small population that use uh, the Gulf here. This is right on the western edge of their wintering range. We were here in late January. We did what we always do here. We parked up here, we had a little bit of lunch and there was a nice uh, gathering of birds. We started looking through a flock of birds that were there and I was really pleased to find about 20 great knot, which is actually is the biggest number I've seen here for several years. And I was even more delighted to find that one of the birds actually had a bright yellow band on its leg and the band said E1. I took some pictures of it and then over the course of the next week, once I got back home, I made some inquiries on the internet and I finally managed to get in touch with the person who actually had put the band on the bird. He's a Russian um, biologist and he had banded the bird in Kamchatka which is approximately 8,300 kilometers from here. That bird was staging at Kamchatka, feeding up, getting ready for its migration south. Dimitri was able to confirm there are large numbers of great knot utilizing this site. He has banded um, many of those birds and he's had some recoveries. He was particularly excited about this bird because this is the, his first recovery um, from the Arabian Gulf. And I was particularly excited about this bird because now we finally know where the great knot that actually spend the winter in the Arabian Gulf, where they actually come from. People concerned about the conservation of this bird in Russia, that they're putting rings on the bird's leg to discover what they do. And whenever you do any research like this and you put a ring on a bird's leg, you often say to yourself, well, I'm doing that, but nothing will ever happen, never be seen again, but I'm doing it, and, you know, it's just good. And then for suddenly to get a, a message from Oscar through to Russia to say, I found your bird. Now that must be pretty good for the person who put the ring on the bird's leg. What a lot of species do is they fly long distances in short bursts. So they might fly a thousand, two thousand kilometers over a couple of days, pretty much without stopping, without feeding. And then they get to certain areas where they then rest for a week or two and they feed like crazy. And th those sorts of areas are places like Coral Vida. So this is essentially a great big petrol station for migratory birds. They drop in and they refuel. They spend a few days doing that or maybe a bit longer, a month or two, and then they again hop on on their migratory journey. There's a number of wetlands around the world which are extremely important for these birds. There are some statistics that suggest that one square metre of mud here has got about as much uh, calorific value as a large chocolate bar. 
It's very, very important to, to, to maintain a right the way around the world this mosaic of habitats. These mudflats in the Gulf are really, really important. They're special, special places for bird migration. The organisation that gave the fund for this project actually saw the project return to them. They got their reward come back with a small bird with a ring on its leg. And I think that's pretty remarkable. And uh, I think the MBZ fund, as it's, as it's uh, fondly known throughout the world, should be very, um, very pleased.